Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Friday, October 23rd, 2015. So I uh, took today off from work, so I'm not in the car. But I uh, felt like I needed to get out and walk a bit. Uh, get some exercise. So uh, I'm out here in the 43 degree temperatures. Do my little tool around the subdivision. And I thought I would record my podcast now. Uh, There'll be no podcast tomorrow because wife and I are going away for the weekend. It's our wedding anniversary. It'll be 29 years come Sunday. So, yeah, we're going away. Can I head up to mid Michigan and, and hopefully see some fall colors? It looks like we've timed things pretty well. So, uh, yeah, it should be a fun time. I got my test back from my finance class last night, the one, the open book test that I called the hardest open book test I've ever taken in my life. Um, I got an 88%, 22 out of 25, which with his grading scale gives me a B. Plus. So, I can't really complain too much about that. I would have liked it to have been higher. But to quote somebody I know, get out of the way of your car, sorry. To quote somebody I know, it is what it is. So, it does mean I won't get an A in that class because the grades are, the, the grade is so ridiculously reliant on the exams that's a little nuts but you know I'm passing it that's the important thing I'm just my GPA is going to take a bit of a hit hoping maybe I can do well enough on subsequent tests to uh, maybe at least get it up to an A minus we'll see Uh, I also <clears throat> finished my read through edits today for Simon Snuffleburger and the Ungrel Horde so I was geeked by that. So even though it's my day off, I went ahead and got up early like it's a work day. Be Mainly because I knew I just had two chapters to go. And I wanted to get that done. So uh, I did that. And uh, I have exported it to Word format. It was in my y, my y Writer uh, novel software and uh, so I export it to Word I gotta go through and I gotta go through and uh, do the final spell check let it see what's all in red squigglies I like Y Rider but it does not have a very robust spell check engine so I fix what I can, and then I usually wait till I get it over to Word and fix the rest there. So, plan is probably get that done this week, this upcoming week, so I can be done in time for NaNoWriMo. Get that totally off my plate and on my wife editor's plate. But what I thought I'd talk about today, and what I really kind of wanted to talk about yesterday, but I decided to save it for today, deals with NaNoWriMo. I made, I made a pretty major decision in regards to NaNoWriMo. I kind of felt like, I don't know, I kind of feel like this, there's this, um, I forget the name of it, but there's this book out there on patio books. If you go to Patio Books and search for NaNoWriMo, you'll probably find it. But it's all the book is all about how this guy wants to write a novel for NaNoWriMo, and he, can't, he doesn't know what to write. And it's this farce where he's trying to figure out what the heck to write about. And he's got all this fantastical stuff that's happening to him, or that he thinks is happening to him, that's kind of going into this book. And it's kind of funny. It's, it's probably something that... You're really only a writer, especially one that's participated in NaNoWriMo is going to appreciate. But just that feeling of, oh my God, NaNoWriMo's here, I don't know what I'm going to write. 
I, I had a bit of that this week. So I was going to write this story that I had tentatively titled Time Exposure. Uh, I'd renamed it from The Arts, which I actively hated. And I talked about that a few, a few podcasts ago, if you want to go look it up. But the wife challenged me, you know, okay, so you got to time travel. Somebody's getting pulled back in time, in this case, to fight, you know, to, to be in World War I. And she's like, how are you going to make that different from the other stories out there? And I was like, hmm. So I've been, I've been trying to think of some plot twists, and I came up with, with some stuff that I don't know if it was enough, but it might have been. Some of it was definitely derivative of other, other things. You know, I, I had one idea that was Shades of Quantum Leap, if you remember that TV show. And then Tuesday, when I was driving to my accounting class, I was listening to an I Should Be Writing episode that Mer Lafferty put out. And she did kind of a NaNoWriMo prep episode. Or at least the first of them. I think she's going to do more than one. And she was talking about, you know, if you find yourself writing the same old book, pick something different. Write something different. Get out of your comfort zone. And I thought about the book that I was planning on writing. And, you know, the plot would have been different, and the characters would have been different. But in my brain, it kind of felt kind of similar, you know, to, this, to, to the other stuff I've written. Uh, probably especially the Ness Relevant series, the Borrowed Time chronology. So... I made the decision, I'm not going to write that book now. It's still on my list of novel ideas. I'd actually written up a bit of a synopsis on the NaNoWriMo website. And I kept that. You know, this is a good starting point for if and when I do decide to sit down and write that novel. And I, I've got this Google Doc that uh, is my list of novel ideas and they're all eight or nine there's like eight or nine on there and I got looking through them and I was like no 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 and the one that stuck out to me is the one that was not science fiction. It was another thriller. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. It's, it's totally different. The school bus go by here. So I tentatively titled this book Baker's Dozen. That's probably not going to be the final title. Um, I haven't looked on Amazon yet. Ever since I've picked Borrowed Time as the title of the first one and I threw it up on Amazon, I came to realize there's so many books are out there titled Borrowed Time. It's very prevalent. If I want to find my stuff, I have to search for borrowed time hues. Otherwise, it's just left with, lost in this noise of all this borrowed time stuff. Um, and I gotta imagine that Baker's Dozen, as I'm thinking about it, um, has got to be the same. So I'll be looking for a title as I write this, but that's the, that's the temporary title. It does fit the book well. So, 
You know, I've always been fascinated by these these situations where somebody you know takes a gun or whatever and they feel the need to go into a school, go into a college, go into a mall and kill a bunch of people and then kill themselves. Yeah, it's it's a mindset I don't understand, which is probably good. <laughs> If I understood that mindset, it might be cause for concern. So I I find it kind of fascinating, you know, kind of like looking at a dangerous animal through the protection of a enclosure at a zoo, you know. I don't want to be so up close and personal that I'm within the range of claws and teeth, but enough, I want to be close enough that I can see it and gaze at it and wonder at its power and its strength and so on and so forth. Anyway, can you, can you tell I'm getting in the, in the novel writing mode here? Sheesh. So, the, the, the epiphany that I had a little while back when I was trolling for novel ideas was what if you had a serial killer whose modus operandi was getting people who are um, what's, uh, kind of functional sociopaths, meaning that they get the sociopath pathological tendencies, but they're they're functioning. They're not going off and killing a bunch of people. Um, but what if you had a serial killer that could make slash entice them to go do this on this person's behalf? Um, and I thought, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting thought. Kind of a remote controlled serial killer. So then I had the idea of, okay, so if, if we're going to have this, bus again, if we're going to have this, then what's the, what, what, what links these? Because, you know, something's got to link these murders. A serial killer wants to put his or her stamp upon the killings to say that they are hers. Or his. What would that stamp be? And, and I decided. I thought. I thought about you know, leaving some sort of calling card or, you know, a tattoo on the person doing the killing. And the person, people doing the killing, well, there'll be no link between them. No obvious link between them. They'll be in you know, different locales, trying to decide how far flung to make it. Um. I'm thinking it's going to be, you know, kind of regional like within the, you know, within a few hours drive time for my serial killer, but I haven't totally decided on that. But so what could link these things? And I decided on the, uh, the number of deaths 12, 12 innocent victims plus the suicidal death in one way or another, the suicidal death of the killer to make the baker's dozen. So that's the book I'm going to be writing. And so I changed the synopsis on NaNoWriMo site yesterday I think or the day before I've got it up there so you know the kind of so, so the so the antagonist is going to be the serial killer um, it's going to be a woman I just said that 
She's going to be a pharmacist. I'll let you think about what that means. <laughs> and then the main character is not going to be a cop. Because yeah, this, you know, this is a thriller, so it's always you got serial killer versus cop, serial killer versus cop. The serial killer, no, so it's going to be this guy that himself probably is a bit of a functional psychopath, and that he's also fascinated with these, with these. I don't know what we want to call it. I don't know what we call, you know, the Columbine-style killers. Probably come up with a a descriptive title for those or see if one already exists out there. But he kind of collects them, meaning he, you know, collects information about them. And he begins to notice this pattern of the Baker's Dozen. And so the book is going to be about him trying to get the police to connect the dots which is not going over very well because there are a bunch of local murders and you know local police departments don't have much need to interact and blah 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 um, and maybe go about preventing the next one you know and, you know, hopefully not being in a position where he's going to be forced to create a baker's dozen of his own. So, yeah, I'm getting excited for it. Uh, it's, it's a little scary switching ideas a week before NaNoWriMo. You know, a week from Sunday is NaNoWriMo. So that's, that's a little scary. But, I, you know, I just felt like to do something totally different, something totally unique, um, I'm not sure I could have done that with the book that I was writing. I still like that book. I still want to write that book. But I, ha I don't think I've found entirely the right angle to write that book from. So like I said, it's in my, it's still in my list of possible novels. I saved that little write-up I did for NaNoWriMo. So perhaps someday I will write that book. However, that day is not today. But anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm like at lap one and a half here. I'm probably way over in time. So I guess I'll let this go over today. So as a reminder, no podcast tomorrow. But I will be back on Monday, back in the car. And I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.